Hello. Hello. <laughs> you guys notice my shirt. See, I never notice stuff like this. I don't. I just, you know, put it on and I go, hey, you know, the Sir David the Bard wear, you know, the, the beer mug. I don't. Anyway, Sir David the Bard, I'm coming to you from the uh, Moscow, capital of Russia. And uh, I came, they wanted me to consult on an aviation problem that they had here uh, in Siberia. And uh, they knew I was an old bus driver uh, from BYU. Uh, I drove for Utah Valley Transit uh, before BYU had buses. <laughs> and we moved all the missionaries, we moved all the people to man tied to the temple before the Provo Temple was built, etc., etc. So, I said, Bard, you've got some experience with this, don't you? And I said, well, yes and no. What do you mean? He said, well, let me tell you a story. I had a group of senior citizens. I, I've got this on another video somewhere, but it may have been a year ago. Uh, I got some senior citizens on a bus, full bus, and uh, four-speed transmission, no synchromesh. You had to hit those gears right every time or you'd come to a stop. And um, in those days, buses had the, the diesel engines in them, but you could go really slow, one mile an hour, and that diesel torque could keep the bus going. <coughs> but if you stopped, <laughs> you're screwed. It's the first presidency calling again, trying to stop me. Hello. No, I'm doing a video. What's going on? I'm starting the Thanksgiving special. Yes, I'm thankful if you don't call me anymore while I'm recording. <laughs> I'm hey, call. All right, call me back in a half an hour. All right, bye. Monson is always very agreeable. Anyway, he'll call me back. So, I had a senior citizen group on, and I was up by uh, Bear Lake. St steep areas up there for a bus. Now, again, if you keep rolling on a bus, in those days, the old buses, you could keep rolling. Nothing could stop that diesel engine. But if you stopped it, and then you tried to get that load moving again, the clutch would just sit there and burn out, and uh, Harry Hardman, Harry, I know you've been dead 50 years. Me and Harry, hey, we were friends, like this. <laughs> what, well, no, not, not exactly like that, Harry. <laughs> Don't sue me for saying you're gay. You weren't gay. There was nothing happy about working for you. Anyway, all these old people behind me on the bus, and um, I guess we were in the mud and the blood and the beer. In Utah, God, in the wintertime, you're always on ice, snow, slush. <laughs> bodies. You run over everything. So anyway, I had to stop. I was pulling a grade, a steep grade, and the car in front, trucks in front, they all went to the left, the right, they went off the road. <laughs> and they're doing this. <laughs> and I learned as a bus driver, I don't want to get in there and dance. I don't. So I stopped. Well, they cleared the problem in front of us, and everybody started up again. Well, <laughs> I told you. Once that load is stopped, it ain't going to happen. So I tried to get it moving again, and it wouldn't move. And, you know, I knew it was going to burn the clutch up, so there's no reason to sit there with the gas to the, the metal, the pedal to the metal, and the clutch all the way out, and you see the smoke coming out the sides. You know the clutch is going to catch on fire, and then you're going to go backwards, because <laughs> the engine <laughs> gears have no way of connecting. And so, you know, there's no braking going backwards there. So anyway, um, I was desperate. In other words, it was a barred day. <laughs> Many barred days have been like that. And I got thinking about Harry and how pissed he was going to be to have to send us up a tow truck to get moving and or another bus to offload, a more modern bus that could start from a, a, a pitch. Well, anyway, I, the barred... He's, he's a good employee. I don't like humans. When humans uh, are, are having to do with employment, I don't want to be around them. Anyway, I figured it out. I figured it out. <laughs> I hope you don't have any grandparents <laughs> that take tour buses. <laughs> Jesus. When I think of what I did, I haven't thought about it since then, except when I saw this airplane in Moscow, in Siberia. 
So I knew I had to lighten the load. It was too heavy of a load for the clutch to finally engage and get moving. So I had to lighten the load was one problem. The other was uh, initiative. I had to get the bus moving. If I could do that, I'm okay. <laughs> so these guys, they're my age now. If someone said, if a tour bus director said to me, would you get out and push my bus? I can't get it to move. I go, fuck you. <laughs> no, no. But these are Mormons. These were Mormons. So I said, all the men who can push, get out and give this bus a push, will you? Well, that's okay. I don't know, maybe 25, 30 of them got out. They got behind the bus. And they start pushing it, and I'm, you know, burning the clutch, and, and it's starting to move. That's all good news. It worked. It worked. But, you know, sometimes, being bipolar, I don't see the end result. I see how to make it work, but I don't see how to stop it from working. How do you get 25 old buzzards back on the bus without stopping it? Oh, Jesus. God. When I think of what I did, uh, I'm glad I'm not in jail. And uh, so anyway, uh, the bus started moving, and the old guys were cheering, w which is okay. I didn't mind if they cheered, but I started yelling, run like hell, and I opened the door of the bus, and each one of these old fat old men, <laughs> they got the bus going, but I couldn't stop. If I stopped, they'd be out pushing again. They'd push it all the way to the top of the hill. So by one by one, they're throwing themselves <laughs> on each other in, in the doorway and in the stairwell. Get the next guy. Grab his pants. Grab him. Get Frank. Frank has had a heart attack. Get him. Jesus. We finally got him all on the bus. I kept it moving. And once I got the last man on, uh, the last man standing, so to speak, um, I could give it gas and shift up, and we were gone. Now, there's a story to tell, tell their grandchildren, I guess. Well, I didn't want Harry to find out about it. I don't think he ever did. I don't think he ever did. But anyway, down below, take a look at my link down below, that a uh, airplane was in Siberia, and it was 50 below zero. Now, 50 below zero is cold. I don't, I've never been in that. I've been uh, maybe 20 below, but never 50 below. The airplane was on the tarmac, <laughs> and it froze on the tarmac. It couldn't move, and you could turn the jet engine on, and it would just vibrate. It wouldn't move. So the pilot said, <laughs> all you old buzzers that can move, go out and push the airplane. And I've got pictures under there. You know, and all these guys are pushing their airplane till it gets moving. I don't know if they had to run alongside and jump in. It's funny shit to the bard. It is funny to the bard. So anyway, I still have health in the navel. I didn't get hurt. Have <laughs> moves them in the bosom and... <laughs> Strengthen the penis. I don't. That was the original thing with the um, help and the navel marrow in the bone. Strength in the loins and in the penis. That's the original uh, uh, writings. Uh, the Mormons go, well, we don't want to say penis. <laughs> so anyway, be careful what buses you get on and what airlines you fly on because you may need <laughs> your tennis shoes to be able to get home. And I don't mean walking. I mean pushing. This bar's gone.